Episode 1 saw us leave our home in London and complete the length of the River Rhine via the Eurovelo 15. We now continue our journey to Istanbul via another river cycle route, the Danube Cycleway, which makes up a large section of the Eurovelo 6. The whole Eurovelo 6 stretches from the Atlantic coast in France all the way to the Black Sea in Eastern Europe, covering over 3,600 kilometres. And we decided to join in Germany at the source of the Danube after a mountainous day's ride up from Switzerland. We'll ride through seven countries, covering around 2,000 kilometers of the Danube, taking in the most popular sections in Germany and Austria. Then the EV6 crosses into Eastern Europe, passing through beautiful Bratislava in Slovakia, the historic cities and huge plains of Hungary, and then south towards Croatia, where we immediately cross into neighboring Serbia. We then end this episode as we reach Romania. In episode one, Cycling the Rhine, we had built up our cycling fitness to a level where it was now comfortable and normal to average around 70 to 80 kilometers a day. We also became more efficient. Everything had found its place in the panniers and we were now a well-oiled machine when it came to setting up camp and cooking meals. We had completely fallen in love with this method of traveling and firmly believed that in a post-COVID world, it's one of the safest, most eco-friendly ways to explore. We saw every type of cyclist along the Danube, from couples taking a career break just like us, to groups and solo riders, school leavers and retirees, to two week holiday makers, disabled cyclists and families. And we also met some real characters that had been on the road for years. This is Louis and we bumped into him numerous times along the Danube. Scenes like this were the norm when cycling the Danube. However, it wasn't all smooth tarmac, problem-free, easy riding. In this episode, we belatedly find out how tough some days can be too. We finally had some mechanical issues to solve and navigation became more and more difficult. We're in a field, middle of nowhere, I'm trying to find the year of LA6 again. So our Danube journey would start at the source, in the town of Donaueschingen in southwest Germany. Depending on how much time you have, you can start the Danube cycleway in many different locations, and we'll talk more about this later in the film. But for example, if you just have a week off work, you could easily ride the more popular Passau to Vienna section, and maybe carry on from Vienna to Eastern Europe next year. How do we feel, Has? Um, we're feeling good. I feel a little bit sore after a long hilly day yesterday. Yeah. But really excited to start this next big stage of our adventure all the way down the Danube. Yeah. See some amazing, exciting cities along the way. Uh, this next section is going to be a real adventure, we think. <laughs> We just found the official first uh, cycle sign for the Danube Riverway um, and we're going to Tutlingen this morning, it's about 25 k's and then we're going to carry on another 30 k or so to the campsite. Lovely way to start actually this, this little cycle path. Reminds us of uh, cycling through Bushy Park or Richmond Park, something like that. Very, very peaceful Tuesday morning. Here we are at the first official bridge crossing of the River Danube. What the hell is that? It's the loudest donkey I've ever heard. Right, let's follow this river has. We've just got to follow it to Romania. Let's go. The EV6 was easy to follow and it wasn't long before we reached our first major point of interest. 
This part of the river is actually flowing underground instead of along this dry riverbed. And then as the water starts to flow more heavily, it fills up again. Well, apparently it goes all the way into the River Rhine. It does actually. Some of the underground rivers take away water from the Danube Basin and go under the hills into the Rhine Basin. We had roughly 80 kilometers to do today and after a later start than usual and it still being the summer holidays we really had to get cracking if we were to get a nice camping spot tonight. Although we hadn't seen too much of the river just yet it had been a great start to the Danube. A little bit of bad news about Hazard's bike as well as the clicking and potential issues with the gears at the back. Uh, we've broken another spoke. We're just wondering whether or not it's because we've got way too much luggage and weight on the back only. Um, seems to be fine, but oh, I don't know. It's difficult to know if it, whether it's too heavy or not. So we need to find a bike shop as soon as we can. Um, it's the really tricky back spokes again on the back wheel, so we need to get proper equipment to fix it. So, Celebi, all part of cycle touring. Uh, at the moment, we're just in beaver territory, so we're trying to spot some beavers. Hazza keeps on thinking she sees beavers, but they're ducks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, very beautiful day, though. I think that's one of the best things, the biggest things I've loved about this trip, is that you can go through an hour or two of fairly monotonous cycling and then you just pop out into a gorge like this with these huge limestone pinnacles just looks just like Thailand or Vietnam or Philippines somewhere like that just did an 80k day after the huge hills that we did yesterday so we're feeling very proud of ourselves pushing on today camping can be the most wonderful experience out in the open with the smell of the forest and the sound of the crickets but sometimes for light sleepers like me it can be absolute hell, especially when you're tired and you know you need your energy for tomorrow. Even more so when the campsite is just so perfect, it's absolutely gutting. It didn't get any easier throughout the trip either, and I eventually found a pharmacy in Austria that sold me some amazing putty style earplugs which worked a treat. I highly recommend trialling various earplugs before you go, especially if camping during the European summer holidays when there's going to be loads of noisy groups around. These ones from a flight were completely useless and if anything blocked out everything but snorers. Been up since about 10 p.m. Dead silent, really beautiful place alongside the Danube. But the reality of cycle touring is that you get a lot of snorers and noisy people in campsites. And when you're really tired, all you want to sleep, all you want to do is sleep and then you can't Got some bloody snorers every night when you just think you've got a quiet spot. Oh, just start shouting stuff at them and nothing happens. Earplugs don't work, music doesn't work. I'm just getting more and more tired. We just got the bikes fixed and cost us about 30 euro. Um, the bloke there trued both of our back wheels. Sorted has his gears out and mended the new spoke on the rear wheel. Didn't get any sleep last night, as you've just seen. It is now 20 past 11, and we have got about 85k to do again today. It's another really long day, but the sun is shining. We've got coffee, <laughs> we've got each other, <laughs> and lunch soon, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, All right, let's get going. loads of cycle tourers. A lot of them are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, some of them. We just spoke to a really nice French couple who, they live in Strasbourg and they took the train down to uh, Donishingen where the, the start of the Danube is 
and then they're gonna cycle along a bigger loop and to somewhere else. Then they're gonna get a train back to their car, something like that. But it sounds really fun. And they're just having two weeks off and they all think we're crazy cycling from London to Istanbul. <laughs> Just a quick update, this is one of those classic moments when you, everything's going really, really well and we're following the signs perfectly, the roads are great and then you end up in a bloody quarry. Don't know how we ended up in here, so we've got to go all the way back up and then there's a massive hill to get back up, which is really annoying and there's a massive thunderstorm coming as well, so... Four liquid all sorts. Oh, mean. So, we were told as well that this was a... Um, what's it called? A warm... A hot spring, so I was expecting beautiful clear water, go in there, lounge, maybe little bar. No, <laughs> it's definitely a bit of a pond with terrapins in it. Good day today. What's the highlights of today, Hazza? Tell me about your day. The gorge. It's gorgeous. <laughs> what is the point of a mudguard? It doesn't to stop the mud getting on all over everything. Mm. It's all over the back of yours as well. It was like a gravel path like this, but it was really, it just rained. Oh, yours is really bad. Mm. Worst mud guards ever. We then reached my idea of heaven, an empty campsite. This campsite was in Munderkingen. A huge empty site with a working shower block and bench table, just around the corner from a massive Lidl. Perfection. Literally slept probably an hour last night and we've just done 85k it was a good day though we really enjoyed it it's amazing um, but could do a good sleep what's around there has just having a wonder so yeah apparently we just give them a call ring them up register pay over the phone probably very impressed oh and there's a little just over the Danube River just there and then we can get some food <sighs> tonight we're doing some Nice cheap little beers, but also some spaghetti, pesto, tomatoes, tomatoes. onion, <laughs> Good morning. This is day 43 now, and we've just got the best setup ever, so I wanted to show you around. Not a soul in sight. This is my little editing suite. I'm just going to do an hour this morning before Hazard wakes up. Really good setup, got my own power, everything I need. This is brekkie, so we've got peanut butter, cranberries and sultanas and bananas. Got the excellent MSR stove. Works without a problem every single time so far. In our food here we've got some cheap instant coffee, some bits and bobs, got the porridge there, lots of tea and coffee, condiments, backup rice, something naughty there. And every morning we have some vitamin C and magnesium tablets. So I think I probably slept about eight hours last night. <laughs> the best sleep I've had so far, that's for sure. Wake up, nice peaceful cup of tea. Oh my God. These as well, by the way, were a new purchase. We had uh, really tiny ones, they were like a shot glass basically, and they just didn't hit the spot. So now we've got a proper mug for a proper cup of tea. Feeling very achy actually from yesterday. <laughs> Maybe has not so much. Uh, we're off to Liepzeig. Liepheim? Liepheim today. Um, we thought it was about 100k, but I don't know how we've calculated it wrong. It's only about 70 or so. 75. Um, still a long day though. And after the 250 we've done in the last three days, it's pretty tough. Legs are really sore today. Oh. Very no. good. Erhingen. 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 We are in Erhingen. Yes, we are. Eating cheese bread. Look at this. Mm. What a lovely it's snack. Been an hour since it's <laughs> Look at this quite interesting fountain. It's a really cool fountain. Just a local middle of nowhere town in Germany. Loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of cycle routes, which makes us very happy. Easy signage, as always. So basically today, this route we were going to go on, um, well we are going on, is Ehingen to Blauberen, which is stage six, and we're going to go on to Ulm after that, and then keep going to our campsite somewhere, 
but there's two different ways to do it. You can either go on a quick route or a slow route. So we're going to go to slow route because it goes to the Blautoff Blue Water Lagoon, the source of the Blau River. Um, it's supposed to be spectacular because it says spectacular there. This is really nice. Yes. Right, Has, tell me about this place. This is a blue lagoon. Correct. We're just now coming into Ulm, U L M, and we're going to stop for lunch. We're going to have a real nice treat of sausage and beer or something. It's been a really boring day today, quite cold and grey as well, nothing to see. The Blue Lagoon was like a little pond, it was blue, it was like, that's quite clever, quite impressive, but still boring. Um, maybe it's the weather as well, but yeah, there's been nothing since the last few days were so cool, so amazing with the. Um, with all the gorges and stuff. Um, so today's been pretty uninspiring. But hopefully if we find a really nice lunch spot and a good camp spot, it'll all be better. As always, the German food options did not disappoint. Mm. <laughs> Here we are, Liebheim. And we did another 78k day, so I think we nearly hit 330 kilometers in four days um we just keep on going it's really good don't know how we're doing it um we're really proud of ourselves oh i know how we that sounds really cocky arrogant I know, but we didn't know that we were capable of doing that many kilometers every day so anyway what i was going to say is that we're at the campsite and we found the best spot <laughs> it feels a bit cheeky but look how far we are so all of this space we could have had all over there there's a lake over there with a beach volleyball they said you could go anywhere on the grass we're literally in the furthest corner next to the mooks which is cows in has i speak and there's a there's a baby farm on this campsite as well so we've got baby goats cows sheep and a little baby football pitch too nope we then had our first real rainy day and I found out my coat was no longer waterproof so we'd planned to pick up a replacement in the next city. Such a grim day, so grim. We'd actually decided to take a two day detour away from the Eurovelo 6 to visit Munich to see Harriet's cousin Tom and wife Katie. Heading off the Eurovelo for a couple of days really made us appreciate it even more as we came across far busier roads and had to actually plan a route for the first time since England. But we're doing good. Should get to Munich by lunchtime. Go see Tom, Katie, and beers. After a big night in Munich, waking up to a heavy Stein hangover, we planned to cycle north back to the Eurovelo. As we rode through the city, we heard a loud pinging sound. Another broke and spoke on my bike. After a quick Google, we found all the bike shops were closed as it was a Sunday, but there was a shop open in Regensburg tomorrow. We decided to take the train to this medieval city and found a lovely warm showers host to put us up for the night. We explored the old town and Matt managed to pick up a new waterproof jacket. Just going to our first warm showers accommodation. Really lovely couple, they sound like it on the text. Um, are putting us up for the night and they're gonna cook us dinner and breakfast apparently. That's really exciting. We just bought them a bottle of wine as well because we feel weird turning up with nothing at all. Uh, so yeah, let's see how it goes. It went really well. The house was amazing and they cooked us a huge spag bowl and even gave us a few cold beers. Rested up, we went to the bike shop to fix Monty. We realized my wheels had fewer spokes than Matt's with just 32, which basically meant it was weaker. So to avoid any more breakages, especially as we headed towards Eastern Europe, we were advised to upgrade Monty's back wheel to a 36 spoke, and it seemed to do the trick. Back on the Eurovela 6 from Regensburg, we headed 60 kilometers east to Straubing. We felt revitalized from our little break, and it felt amazing to be back on the river. The next day we managed a big 100 kilometers to Passau, which would be the last major town for us in Germany. We stayed at Camping Passau on the River Eels, just a five minute ride from the old town. 
and explored the city the next morning before beginning this most popular section of the Eurovelo 6. Passau is over 2,000 years old and is well known for its Baroque architecture and is a popular start point for the river cruises which head east to Vienna and onto the Black Sea, just like the Eurovelo 6. Known as the Three River City, Passau is located on a thin peninsula where the River Inn, Danube and the smaller River Ills all join. This hugely popular section to Vienna is perfect for cyclists looking for a scenic flat route that can be completed in around four to six days. If you choose to start your trip in Passau, you could arrive by train and hire a bike with panniers and then drop it all off in Vienna. There are plenty of hotels and campsites and the Eurovela rarely leaves the river. You really can't go wrong. Guided group tours are also common between Passau and Vienna and all the way to Budapest. So if you prefer a more organized service, staying in hotels and having your luggage forwarded each day, this could be a really good option for you. So we've been through many border crossings already so far on this trip. Um, this one's on the dam, which is really cool. So that's Austria behind me. And then behind me that way is Deutschland, Germany. So today on day 50 we are going to go via Linz, which is the third biggest city in Austria and we're heading towards a place called Mauthausen and we're also going to go and visit one of the concentration camps. Just waiting here on the Eurobello just for a ferry across the river. After crossing the river to Ottensheim via chain ferry, we rode along the smoothest of cycle paths before crossing over the Danube again and into the centre of Linz. Hitler spent much of his youth in Linz, but now this impressive city is more famous for being a diverse cultural hotspot. After picking up some supplies in the city, we then reached nearby Mauthausen, where from 1938 to 45, the Nazis operated a gruesome concentration camp used to mine building materials. The most infamous of punishments was for prisoners to carry heavy granite blocks up the so-called stairway of death from the quarry. The site is now a memorial for the victims. It's thought over 100,000 prisoners died here. It's popped again. You see that all the air is going into one area and nothing into the others. Useless. I don't know what I'm doing. I just don't know what I'm doing. It's really annoying, but I've emailed the guy again in Ireland and I'm hoping that they're gonna send a new one out. I just can't not sleep anymore. And it was so comfy as well. It's really disappointing. Just heard that familiar creak and then it just goes pop. Um, had to book a hotel tonight. It's gonna be 36 pounds, so it's not too bad. It's near to where we were supposed to go tonight, just so I can get a good night's sleep um, and we can work out, you know, what we're going to do. The Eurovelo 6 then passes through pleasant countryside until the little medieval town of Gren, where we stopped for lunch, took a ferry across the river and followed the riverside all the way to Ibs, home of a brilliant little cycling museum. We're at the Bicycle Museum in Ibs, spelled Y-B-B-S. <laughs> And here we are, we just got into Poklan. This is where we're going to stay for the night in a cheap hotel because I burst my bed last night. <laughs> um, 40 euros, bargain, charge all our stuff up, have a good night's sleep, and then consider our options. The next morning, we followed the Danube to Melk Abbey, which is regarded as the epitome of Baroque architecture in Austria. The next section is known as Wachau, a collection of charming villages and seemingly endless vineyards, which produce some of the country's finest wines. We then overnighted in Zentendorf, 
which would be the last camping for us in Western Europe, as tomorrow we had just a short ride into Vienna where we'd treat ourselves to a few nights in a hostel and time off the bikes to explore the capital city. Going for some local specialities tonight. Massive schnitzel with extra uh, onion rings, large chips. Has has gone for a biggest sausage you can find. Grand Old Vienna is an incredible city, and if you haven't been, you absolutely have to. Named as one of the world's most livable cities, we certainly saw why. We're at the Vienna. Unbelievable, we're going through a park um, on the way back to the Danube River. Uh, which will take us all the way to Bratislava in Slovakia. 42 kilometers to go. It's our first time we've seen, it's the first time we've seen Bratislava as well, kind of sign. Long, long way. Oh no, look, it turns into gravel now. Oh God. Oh, there's Vienna. So we've basically come, bloody hell, it's massive, isn't it? We're kind of following this all the way. And then we are going to essentially just cross over the border and get into Bratislava where we've got a lovely hotel book for the night and we're going to go and explore Fig and Parmaham. One of the most exciting things about arriving in a completely different country was the food. Just got to Batis Harbour now and straight to the Slovak pub. Potato dumplings with Slovak cheap cheese and bacon. Cheap cheese? Sheep cheese. It's so yummy, you have no idea. Oh. We spent the afternoon sightseeing around Old Town Bratislava. Grabbing a drink or an ice cream wherever we fancied, as compared to Western Europe, everything was far more affordable. We researched and estimated our daily budget before we left, and in Western Europe this came to around 75 euro a day for the both of us. And we did pretty well at sticking to this. From here in Slovakia until Turkey, we had budgeted around 50 euro a day, which even included many hotels or apartment stays. With it being our third anniversary, we decided to treat ourselves and went for a restaurant dinner and a posh drink at the Sky Bar, all still for less than two pints of beer in Switzerland. Initially after the Eurovelo 6, we had planned to scoot our way down the Black Sea coastline to Istanbul, but with our new plan to head south once we reached Romania, we ordered a Eurovelo 13 guidebook to be delivered to the hotel and spent the evening planning the month ahead over a few beers in town. Just give it a vague plan really, because it's going to be a lot harder than the first eight weeks. Very exciting. And we're just leaving the film hotel here in Slovakia, Bratislava. And uh, yeah, we're going to enter Hungary today, really entering Eastern Europe. Within 10 minutes of leaving Bratislava, we reached a glorious cycle path that took us all the way to the Hungarian border, where we continued to follow the EV6 to our next campsite in the attractive university town of Gior. Things were going great, we were on budget and we felt fit, and with six weeks in Western Europe behind us, everything felt new and exciting. We had an excellent first night's camping in what seemed to be someone's backyard in Gior, and already began to understand why Eastern Europe is known for being so friendly and hospitable. We were looking forward to more easy riding in Hungary, and the roads and signs were just brilliant. However, this soon changed, and it suddenly became clear that our adventure was just beginning. In Hungary on the Euro L6, you've got lots of these signs everywhere. Really, really easy to find, easy to follow. And so far, so good. It's taken us on all the quiet routes where possible. Although the signage was good, the quality of surface ranged from gravel to sand to dangerous pothole main roads. <laughs> Good progress, two meters. <laughs> Look at this, we've got the whole place to ourselves. There's only a few other cycle tours around. 
It's only middle of September, but apparently it's just really off season, which is amazing. This um, campsite tonight is called Eden, and uh, it's cost us about nine euros. <laughs> it's so cheap. So all in all today, I think we've only spent about 25 euro for both of us. We even had lunch with a couple of pints as well um, on the way and got food for tonight. six takes us straight onto this very 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 busy straight road so I have to brace yourself every time one comes past you bloody hell not much fun this but it's our friend from Quebec again <laughs> he's overtaken us overnight I don't know where he stays what a legend he's got a massive glasses on morning See you soon! We've reached the beautiful city of Estegom and from here the poor quality roads ended as the EV6 rejoined the Danube and took us along a scenic quiet cycle path practically all the way to Budapest. Just 40 kilometers shy of Budapest and our next scheduled mini break, we had a night in a lovely campsite on the outskirts of Centendra. And the following morning, we were to meet a guy about a bed in the town square. En route, we yet again bumped into our mate Louis. I love it. Meet so many amazing people. <laughs> oh look, someone's coming. He's got a motor, what's that? He's got a motor, he's got a motor on his bike. Crazy man. Yeah. So he picked up the bike in Badoos in Liechtenstein and cycled all the way here. But before that you walked here from France. So cool. I mean so we just met Ecos and we're now gonna go to Budapest and we're gonna find some food. And I came got, from Budapest, so it's a yeah. place. <laughs> and he's got a sleeping mat. Yeah. <laughs> Look who we found again, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> With my bed popping around 10 days ago, the amazing people at Thermarest offered to post me a brand new, bigger replacement. The only issue was that we had no fixed address. In the months leading up to our own tour, I was getting inspiration on YouTube from ACOS's Eurovelo 6 videos, and really with no other option, I reached out to him to see if he could receive a package from us. Ordinarily, this would seem a pretty strange request from a random bloke on the internet, but the force is strong in the cycle touring community, and ACOS agreed and even offered to meet us in Sventrendra and ride with us into his hometown of Budapest. What a guy. Check out Akos's YouTube channel, he's an absolutely hilarious guy and I'll put the link in the description. This place is so cool, this is where Akos had his birthday and it's these old disused buses. This is our first Hungarian food and Hungarian beers. This is Langos. Yes. And it's kind of like a donut with loads of sour cream, loads of cheese, deep fried. <laughs> it literally is incredible. Um. <laughs> hey, that man there. He has brought us to Grandma's kitchen, not his Grandma's kitchen. Nah, no. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe you will keep a spoon?
So this is, don't get fooled by the label, this is Palinka, <laughs> not wine. Uh, this is a typical Hungarian spirit, this is homemade. And it can range from 40 to 60 or maybe up to 70 degrees in alcohol. Uh, so I just brought it for you up to this view, to the beautiful view for your first tasting. So man, yeah, let's do this. At first you get a taste. <laughs> Camera woman. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> oh, don't smell it. Whichever, but normally it's a shot because it's so bad. But I think. <laughs> I think this one is good. I don't know if you can agree with me. It's really nice. We'll see what she says. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, look at this city. So we're just leaving Budapest. Day 61, and we're off to a place called Donsod. We packed as lightly as we could, and of course travelling as a pair, we could share the load. I had these Altura panniers, which were falling apart, but then I had had them for about 10 years, and I'd been commuting with them and done a few tours. Harriet had these bomb-proof Ortlieb panniers, and we both had Ortlieb lockable bar bags. We had this large stuff sack, which sat on top of one of our racks, and contained all the tent stuff and the camping mats. This Ortlieb waterproof bag sat on top of the other bike and contained all of our food and general kitchen stuff. The three litre platypus was absolutely essential for making sure we kept hydrated and had enough to cook with. Just about to cross the river and leave Budapest. I'm gonna really miss this city. I absolutely fell in love with it. I think we both did. What a great couple of days. And uh, on to the next adventure now. Along the way, especially as we headed east, we found helpful notes from previous cycle tourers. This was a particularly useful one telling us about a detour. We may not have seen many other cyclists after Budapest and signage became pretty sparse, but it was nice to know that people had ridden the same route before us and that we were on the right track. We're in a field, middle of nowhere, I'm trying to find the Eurovelo 6 again. The Eurovelo became tricky to follow, but again, we knew we just had to find the river. So tonight, I'm gonna try out the new bed. So this is the one that Thermarest sent to Budapest for me because um, the previous two have now broken. This is a different style of bed and it's a um, self-inflating for the most part but it hasn't got uh, the inner pockets that blow up as well so hopefully it's going to be more reliable. So this one is 196 centimeters long which means it should be taller than me. I'm 184. It's wide as well um, basically. The idea is to open it up, let it self inflate itself, see how long it takes. Okay, so not even two minutes, and it's got a fair amount of air in it already, so you can probably sleep on it just like that. But I think the idea now is apparently to give it about three or four big blows, and uh, that should be it. That's three big puffs, and it's completely blown up. That is so simple. Okay, you can tell now it's 196. This mat was a massive improvement. It's just not worth saving the extra little bit of weight or space. So if you're taller or wider or both, go for this one. Please consider supporting our channel and consider clicking the links in the description to all of our kits. We just reached over 100k, new record today. We still got a good 20k or so to go to Badger, so smash the record. 
Uh, we didn't really mean to when we set off this morning. It was supposed to be 80 or 90k day. Um, but we did such good time earlier. We made such good time that we decided to just carry on. We felt good. It's been nice and flat. As you can see, the weather is glorious. And then um, we're going to go and have a real big treat meal. Um, all the Hungarian food we can get. It's our last night in Hungary today. So Croatia we're going to. tomorrow! Yeah, going to be in Croatia tomorrow. Um, got two days in Croatia and then we hit Belgrade by Saturday now because we did such good time today. And uh, we're going to stay in the hostel for two nights in Belgrade so we can have the whole day on Sunday to explore. And here we are in Baja. We're here in Badger. We just got to the Badger Youth Hostel camping site. Another place that's eight quid or something, seven quid I think it was. Record day, 124, 123 kilometers today. So proud of ourselves, Army has. So hungry. The fish soup in Badger is just phenomenal. stops its cycle path for the last 5k or so going into Croatia so just got to be a little bit careful. There's no cycle lane going into Croatia. That's a shame. But um cars. Yeah <laughs> let's pretend to be a car. And here we are in Croatia. Just had to get our passports and uh, it's all very quick and painless. But all the cars and lorries have to wait for absolute ages. Apparently they have lots of immigration problems here. This is the queue for the Hungarian border on the Croatia side. Just inside the border here in Croatia after Hungary. And it says, make yourself at home. We'll come around at eight o'clock. The plan this morning was to follow the Eurovelo 6 through the vast Croatian plains to Ilok, just before we'd cross over the river to Serbia. It looked like there should be a hotel or a campsite here, but as it was now late September, we found many campsites or hotels were already closed or had no way to contact them. All of a sudden, with Serbia around the corner, it really felt like we'd gone from leisure cycle touring to adventure cycle touring. We were to pass through Vukovar, which was heavily damaged during the Croatian War of Independence in the early 90s. The damage here was called the worst in Europe since World War II. In 1991 in Vukovar, Croatia, where we are now, for 87 days of the Battle of the Town, Serbians fired on average 12,000 shells and rockets per day into this town. So evidence of all of those bullet holes, some of them have been covered up, some of them have been knocked down, but it's still really quite raw here. As we approached Eloc, it turned out there was nowhere open to stay and it was getting late and we didn't fancy wild camping along the Croatia-Serbia border because of apparent landmines. So we decided to push on into Serbia as we saw a hostel on the map. This made it 120 kilometers today and we really hope the hostel was open. We found a hostel just over in the Serbia border uh, here in Baka Palanka. So we just actually crossed the border, stamped our passports and we're going over to Danube. Look at that. What a lovely way to enter the country. Just leaving back at Palanca uh, and the Palanca hostel cost us 20 euro for the night and it was absolutely perfect. We let us, they let us put our bikes up here, all of our luggage. So we're just gonna go out to the town, cycle out to the countryside and we should be in Belgrade by hopefully Saturday.
Today we've gone for some burek for lunch and uh, this is a local speciality it seems to be in Eastern Europe in general but it's like thick layers of uh, sort of pastry with potato and meat so good We had originally planned just to spend one night in Belgrade, but we heard so many good things about the city, so we decided to stick around for an extra night to explore. For cyclists, Serbia was turning out to be a real highlight. The people were incredibly friendly, and the food was pure calorific heaven. So what we have here, it kind of looks like a calzone without the bread around it and just loads of meat. I have gone for the ribs. It's a local speciality ribs. So, so good. Everything still felt really cheap compared to Western Europe. That meal was under a tenner in total. We took in the sunset of the fortress and then enjoyed one last big meal to celebrate our three year anniversary. I only used a small cannon point and shoot, so no GoPro for the wet days, and as we left monsoon like Belgrade, we navigated through dangerous heavy traffic and super fast Woo! roads in the suburbs. Cycle touring is beautiful! We've been well overdue a day like this. Oh, it's great. The Eurovella then turned off to muddy flood dikes, better suited for mountain bikers. With no camera today, here are a few phone clips that pretty much sum it up. Even back on the pathways, the riding still wasn't risk free as you can see from this sign. Been a really tough day today. It's been no more than 11 or 12 degrees and it's just been absolutely bucking it down. Just clocked 90 kilometers and we're almost at the little town on the river and we're hoping there's a little hostel or a campsite. The one good thing about today is that the Eurovelo 6 signs are perfect. So luckily we hadn't have to worry about any directions or any problems with that at all. It's been quite simple. It's just mentally just get through it. It's been wet and cold and pretty horrible. The other thing we found today was that there's uh, been lots of wild dogs just running into the road and chasing us. Uh, one ran right in front of Hazla on the main road and this is it, nearly 100k now. And it's been one hell of a day. We heard someone had stayed at this fun place before. Zimmer rooms, here we go. This little place was in Stara Palanka and was a real lifesaver. As cool as wild camping sounds, in real life, after 100 kilometers in the cold rain, to have a hot shower and a bed for the night was absolute heaven. The incredibly welcoming host fed us an obscene amount of food and after a hot shower, we got a good night's sleep. Thankfully the sun came back out the next day and excitingly we were close to what would be one of the most spectacular sections of the Eurovelo 6, the Iron Gates Gorge, which would take us pretty much all the way to Romania. Good morning. Good morning. We're on a ferry. Not gonna lie, this ferry seems a little bit too small for the massive lorry that's on it and the tiny boat trying to trying to tow it. And we seem to be going into this wall. This must be like hanging off the edge. Classic. After arriving last night in the torrential rain and really, really cold temperatures, so glad to see the blue sky this morning. That was the little hotel we stayed at. It's called the Restaurant Sensei basically a little restaurant with a room above it. It was shaping up to be one of the most incredible days of the entire tour when snap my pedal sheared completely off. It was totally unrepairable and of course we had no spares for such an issue or any issues in fact, apart from a few spare inner tubes which we still hadn't needed to use. I bodged it back on so I could at least push on the down pedal but I essentially had to cycle with one leg. Thankfully we still had some phone signal and I found a small bike shop about 15 kilometers away. An absolute legend, he's just walking off there. Went into this, took us to this little computer service shop 
and said my uncle is the president of the local cycling team and uh, about 10 minutes later he turned up with one pedal and we fixed it basically the pedal was just knackered cheap sort of plasticky pedal and the other one's staying staying the same but it works and we're back on the road and we're going on to the gorge this is supposed to be the best part of the danube so you can kind of see it it's just over there Okay, we're here in Donji Milanovac and one of my favourite things about Donji Milanovac is the fact that they have a massive mammoth in their park. A mammoth sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> oh. We're just leaving Donji Milanovac. Great pronunciation. And uh, we had a, a really nice little stay in the back of the hostel, um, right in the middle of the town, in the shed. But it was freezing cold. Um, luckily we had our sleeping bags as well, but it got down to like one or two degrees last night. And as you can see, we've still got our jackets on, it's really cold. It's also supposed to be the most spectacular day on the gorge. So we're gonna see the big face, which is carved into the mountain. More about that later, when I remember what the name is. And uh, the narrowest part of the gorge as well, so it's about 120 meters across, it's really quite narrow. So we just went up a nice big hill, really amazing views, and we're just about to go through the longest tunnel of this stretch. It's uh, 371 meters long and it's pitch black in these as well. So we're going to put our head torches on, all the lights on and just go as fast as we can basically. 370 odd meters isn't actually that fast, so we came up pretty quickly and then we came out to this view. Undoubtedly some of the best riding we had anywhere in Europe, we followed the Eurovela 6 along the Danube which runs along the border of Serbia and Romania. We were soon to be coming to the end of this second stage of our journey to Istanbul, but not before one last epic sight, the monumental Disabolus Rex, which is the tallest rock sculpture in Europe. We took some time to take it all in and then headed downhill towards the Derdap Dam, which doubles as the border crossing over to Romania. Many choose to continue all the way to the Black Sea from here, but we chose to overnight in a hotel in the city and then join the Eurovelo 13, which briefly joins the Eurovelo 6 here. So we're in Romania, woo! Ah. Country number 11, if you're counting England. The border crossing was pretty good. Um, you basically go over the huge dam. Um, so from Serbia side over to the Romanian side of the Danube. And then when you get over here, there's basically no cycle lane whatsoever. It's just a very busy road. And there's a bit of a hard shoulder, but that's about it. We're about 13 kilometers away from Drobeta. And that's where we're gonna be staying tonight. So we basically have to follow this main road along the river. Looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> well, we're gonna take it easy and make sure we stick close together. We've got our rear lights on and um, we should be fine. So let's crack on. Join us in the third and final film as we take the Eurovelo 13 back into Serbia, then up into the Balkan Mountains, where the plan was to ride through Bulgaria, North Macedonia, back through Bulgaria into Greece, and finally Turkey, where we'd finish our London to Istanbul bike tour. The Eurovelo 6 from the source of the Danube to Romania, it really had everything and we cannot recommend it highly enough. The next stage certainly took the adventure to a whole new level. So see you in the next one and thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel. We have plenty of plans, so please subscribe and watch this space.